Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna have a look on the header files and if you haven't watched my video on the compiling multiple source file, then make sure to watch that because this video will use those concepts of compiling multiple source files. Okay, so let's get started. So in this video, we will learn about preprocessors and include directive, what are they and how to use them in your code and what are headers, how we can use them in your code and how header works, right? So let's get started with the preprocessors and include directive. Okay, so first we will talk about the preprocessor. So you can see that we have here the hash sign. So this is what we call the preprocessor. Everything starts with the hash sign will be called preprocessor. And you must have seen uh, like uh, stdio.h. So this is a file that we are including in this uh, translation unit, right? So how we can uh, understand this? To understand this, let's open a disk file, uh, which will be this stdio.h, right? Which comes with your compiler. So I am using the TDM GCC 64 bit. If you go into this uh, mingw, right? And include directory. Now you can see that we have lot of header files here. So let's search for that stdio dot h right if you drag it into our sublime text now it gets opened right so now you can see that uh, it is something very complex kind of code which is written in c language okay so this is a header file right this is a simple text file right so we are including this into our this source file right to see actual working example let's run some commands and if you don't know about the command line then make sure to watch the command line video or the gcc video right so we are here using the preprocessor right preprocessor main dot c and we will output into a file right and hit enter okay now write the sublime and main dot i okay now you can see that we have pre-processed it uh, look at this built in command line and main dot c okay so the first thing that we have to save this file now let's again do that okay so you can see that when we have saved this uh, source file right it uh, has something the same look of the stdio.h file that means this stdio.h file is included on top of this uh, main.c file right now you can see that the actual your code is here right uh, it is approximately <laughs> 1036 lines so you can see that how the preprocessor works it is just a text substitution Apart from the include, uh, we have something like define, right? We can use uh, something, uh, use int, okay? So, let's do that. Here we can check for that, use int, then integer equals to 5. Otherwise, else we will use float equals to float b equals to 5 right and and if right uh, we can also make the name same because uh, either of these will happen right so this will be done using the preprocessor not the actual runtime code so let's uh, do the same commands okay okay so i have done something mistake so if def right so otherwise we can also use this if defined in parenthesis use integer if if this kind of symbol is defined with the help of this defined preprocessor then we should have to compile this otherwise this right not compile it is just a text uh, substitution and decision making that what kind of text we have to persist after preprocessing so let's do that okay so we have preprocessed it now let's uh, do the sublime text okay now you can see that uh 
here we have the integer a equals to 5 but there is no float variable right so we can also undefine it like uh, this now let's again run the command okay if we go at the bottom now you can see that at this time we have the float so this is how the preprocessor work it is something which is processed before the actual source code compilation so this is what we call the include directive and the define directive okay we will talk more about the macro programming in the later videos of the series but for now we are just talking about the include directive right and you can also see that we have here the angle brackets and and you can also write here the double keywords also so what's the difference the difference is that uh, first this header file will be searched in the current directory of this source file not the standard directory of the your compiler for example this is the standard directory right so this file will be searched for the current directory of this uh, source file like uh, if you go into the code sorry okay now you can see that here we have the c file uh let's have a large look okay so this is the c file and this is the pro processed file so let's delete that so this is the source file and uh, this will check for the stdio.h file in this directory not the standard directory right and if the preprocessor doesn't find this uh, header file inside uh, the current directory it will check for in the standard directory so this uh, will also work so let's do that okay now sublime okay now you can see that it is also working okay note that we don't have still compile this source file we are just pre-processing it and seeing the results okay doing that we can also do something conditional inclusion also like if we use a uh, math library then include something math dot h otherwise we don't have to use this so and if right now let's look at the how headers works and then after getting some knowledge about the headers and how they work we will move on the practical example of uh, making our own headers and compiling multiple source file into a single one with the help of header files right to understand the concept of headers we will take an example of two source files to understand the concept of headers we will take an example of two source files right and this source file contains some common code or text right and there is some other text which is not common right so copy pasting these common codes into multiple source files is not recommended so there must be something which will be invoked at the pre-processing time so this is what we are doing with the help of hash include sign right which is our pre-processor directive or essentially the include directive right so what we will do is to create another file which will be our header file and we will just uh, cut out the common text into this uh, new header file and then tell each of this source file uh, with the help of include directive that you can include this new header file uh, in a single line so you don't have to uh, copy paste the entire text into each of your source files right now these source files can be simplified with very nice uh, non-common text right so we have separated out the common text out of these source files so this is the concept of header files and header files can have extensions .h or .hpp depending on the needs but it doesn't matter right and commonly uh, in the c language .h is uh, mostly used and in the c++ language .hpp is used okay you can have any extensions of the header files but following the convention is very good for any programmer right so now we can tell each of this source file with the include directive that we have to include uh, the header.h file okay and this will be done using the preprocessor not the actual compiler of your source code right now let's jump into the sublime text to see how actually the header files work and how we can make our own header files right so let's do that 
to get more understanding of header files let's do some code so first i will write a function which will print the integer value and its name right so integer value and const char uh, like uh, description right and this can be the variable's name also so print f so we will first write the description and then the value okay so description and then value now here we are using standard functions so let's include the stdio.h file and now let's write different version of this in, in print integer function for the float like uh, print float float value const char description and then print f description and the value okay so we have the two versions of the same function in c language it is not possible to write overloads for just a single function name right so that is why we have to write here the float and integer to make the function name different and to get rid of the naming conflicts okay so we have the actual definition and declaration both in this uh, file right so let's write your executable code so we have integer x equals to 5 and float xf equals to 5.5 right and we are calling the functions like this one and we have x print uh, float xf and uh, xf okay now let's return zero so now let's compile so gcc main.c and main.exe okay now let's run this now you can see that we have x is 5 and xf is 5.5 this is obvious now let's go ahead and suppose that we have a lot of functions like uh, float get square right so we will just wrap these functions inside a single header file right and corresponding source file to contain the definition of these functions so what we are going to do is to create a new file which will contain the utility functions utility.c we will name it okay now we will cut all the definition of these functions from this uh, source file into our utility okay now we will create a header file which will be our utility header dot h right utility dot h and in header files remember that uh, it may be possible that we are including the same header multiple times like ut dot h right and uh, utility dot h so this is what we call the multiple inclusion of the same header file right so how we can get rid of this so to do that we should have to use some preprocessors also like if uh, if not defined or you can use this the not defined uh, utility utility dot h then define utility dot h right so this is a convention that you should use because this should be a macro that shouldn't be defined in this header file right so that is why we are using this weird kind of naming scheme so just stick with that so let's write and if okay so here we have to write the declarations of these functions just so just uh, copy the signature of this function okay now let's copy the signature of this function also okay now you can see that this is uh, very nice and the definition of this function can be abstracted also right uh, in this uh, binary source file so we have to also include into this uh, utility source file but it is uh, not necessary uh, because we are not 
we are not using these functions inside this uh, source file right so that is why uh, it is not necessary to use this uh, header file but uh, it is good practice to include this because uh, it may happen that you can accidentally use any of these functions inside this source file also so let's include this header file into our main.c utility.h okay so if you compile this main.c file now you can see that we have undefined reference exception to the print float right so how we can get rid of this so this is because we are we haven't not compiled the definitions of these uh, functions to do that we have to compile the utility.c to utility dot o okay now you can see that uh, we have the incompatible implicit declaration of built-in function printf so here you have not included the standard header file so let's include stdi.h now let's again compile this so you can see that we have compiled successfully it now and also note that we can remove this from here because all the work that we are requiring from here is done by this print int and print float and there is no printf kind of reference from this uh, source file right so just uh, compile this main.c and main.o and we have to link those files right if you don't know how to link them then you should watch that video on the compiling and linking multiple source files in gcc check that out okay so write just the name.o and utility.o and then output it as main.exe now let's run that now you can see that the same code is running very good so this is pretty much for this video and in the next video we are going to talk about the macro programming so be ready with that i will meet you in the next video thanks for watching